So now hopefully we're comfortable with input and output and numerical input. Um, now I'd like to do a little bit of if statements. And for if statements, we'll just do a, a little simple quiz. I'm going to get you started on a quiz. I want you to do, uh, do a little quiz assignment here. But I'll just get you started kind of on the basics. Um, so again, in JavaScript, we'll just do a quick little simple quiz, question one. And again, right, we're just doing it kind of console based with alerts and prompts. And I would just have a question. Let's answer one, be assigned, prompt, and ask a question. Who is your teacher? And then we do an if statement, right? If answer one, if that variable is equal to Mr. V, um, or we can do things like or, sorry, answer one equals Mr. Veldkamp. Again, let me give myself a little more room here. I want to make it big and oh, it won't even let me. Because my text is so huge. Maybe I can just change it to large and you can still see it. Um, if answer one equals Mr. V or answer one equals Mr. Veldkamp, then what do we do? I'm just going to alert correct. Else I'll alert incorrect. Okay, that's the that's the basics of an of a binary if statement, right? If this is true, do this, else do this. And for a quiz, that's the main main thing we can do. If we wanted to do change, remember there was like if, else if, that kind of stuff. Um, and then I could copy and paste and have a question two. And let answer two be assigned prompt and ask a different question. You know, what is two plus three? And then if answer two equals, and remember prompt returns a string, and, and I don't need to do a math. I'm not gonna convert it to a number. I don't, I'm not too worried about that. I just wanna know, did they type in five? So if answer two equals five, correct, else incorrect. So let's see what that looks like. Who is your teacher? We'll say Mr. V, correct. What is two plus three? We'll do something wrong, six, and it'll say incorrect. Okay, simple as that. Although we should probably have um, a score, right? Let's score be assigned zero and create a variable to keep track of the score. And if I get the question correct, I can go score is assigned score plus one or score plus plus or score plus equals one, those shorthand notations. Um, and then same here, score is assigned score plus one. And then at the end I can output results of quiz and I'll just alert your score is score. Okay, so really basic quiz start. And that's all I expect you to do in the Python version as well is just Give me a quiz. Um, we might look at like uh, some options of like lowercase, and and you should calculate a percentage, and then based on their score, do uh, uh, some feedback based on their score and stuff like that. But really, I just want you to, to ask some questions, use your statements to test whether uh, they get it right or not. So, Mr. Veldkamp, we'll try that one. Oh, that was incorrect. And then five, correct. Your score is one. I guess I should have written like your score is one out of two, something like that. Um, oh, and I got this one wrong because I didn't have a period in the answer here. I typed a period. Okay. Anyway, so that's that's the the basics here. Let's see what this looks like in in Python. Okay. Let's see what that looks like in Python. So. Um, yeah, I guess we can set up a score right away. And again, just variable score and assign it to be zero. It's easy as that in Python. Um, question one, well, we know how to do input, right? So answer one is assigned and you just use the input. Who is your teacher? You know, this little you know, thing pops up. It's a little annoying actually. Um, okay.
Okay, so answer one is assigned input, who is your teacher? And then um, the key, a really important thing in Python for if statements, um, is we don't have these curly braces. Right? We don't have these, these braces or curly brackets to show us where the if statement starts and ends. In Python, it's really important that you use indentation. And what we do is we do an if statement, and you don't need, I think you can do parentheses. No, usually you don't do parentheses. You just go straight into it. If answer one is equal to, and just the double equals in this case, uh, Mr. V, and then we use a colon. And whenever we do a colon, that indicates that I'm starting a new block of code. And you'll notice right away when I hit enter that it indents for me. Okay, and that indent needs to be consistent. Uh, I'm going to print correct. And then um, do score is assigned score plus one. Now this block of code is done, right? If this is true, do this. Then I unindent and I can do an else, and then I do a colon. And again, notice how that when I hit enter, it automatically indents. And then this is what will run if the else is true. And then I unindent again because I want to start another question. Okay. So anyway, that's really important. It has to be the exact indentation. It has to line up precisely. Okay, otherwise it will not work. Um, let's try this. Let's do the, try that again. Who is your teacher? Mr. V. And it says correct. And if I type in something wrong, it gives me incorrect. So the if else is working. Now, one thing um, to do if I want to check multiple answers, in JavaScript we use this double vertical line for or. In Python, we actually just use the word or. Um, so there's and, and there's or, not, that kind of stuff. So we can go or answer one equals Mr. Veldkamp. <clears throat> and I need to end that quotation there. Right, so either this is true or this is true. And it should allow both multiple responses there. And then, yeah, if I want another question, I would just do the same thing. The input, what is 2 plus 3? Too many quotations, sorry. Um, if answer 2 equals 5, print correct. Score is assigned score plus 1. Now, we can also do shorthand notations like plus equals 1. But Python does not support plus plus, so you can't do that. Um, I'm just going to stick with this. Scores assigned score plus one, and then we unindent and do our else, and the else is just going to say print incorrect. Okay, run that. We'll test the Mr. Velcamp part. That's correct. Two plus three is five. Correct. And I should have done at the end here a little output. Ooh, home row keys. Output result of quiz. And we can print, you know, your score is score out of two. Now this, just a reminder, is probably not going to work we're probably going to get an error message from this. I want you to think about why. Let's run it and see. Let's see why we're going to get an error message there. Hey, Mr. V, five. We've seen this before. Print your score is score. Can then only concatenate string, not integer. Right, remember score is storing an integer value and we're adding one to it. So it's staying as, as uh, an integer. So we have to convert it to a string when we want to print it out. Okay, so when we want to do that addition with the strings to print it out, just convert it like that. Mr. V, five, two out of two. 
Okay, so this is this is the start of a quiz, right? Add a couple more questions, um, but then also calculate the percentage, and then do some sort of a, an output at the end too, right? Based on their score. Um, I'll let you look up um, two lowercase in 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 Python or in JavaScript. Remember, we would often go um, dot two lowercase, and that'll convert what they typed into a lowercase. I think in Python it's just dot two lower. So very, it's very similar. I'll let you Google that if you want to make it case insensitive. And then the other thing I'll highlight is here we're just doing binary of statements. Um, at the end, I do expect you to do like a if, you know, score is equal to five, do this. And then instead of in JavaScript, we did else if. In Python, they combine into an elif if score is equal to four, something like that, and then print your message. Okay, so that's just a little thing you should take take care of is when you're doing a chain selection statement. Um, in, in JavaScript, it's else if, but in Python, they just do an, an elif. And then, of course, um, you can end it with an else if you wanted to. And these messages don't make sense, but I'll, I'll leave it here just so that you can be reminded about the uh, that elif notation. Okay, um, so that's the basics of if statements. Again, the key to these if statements is we don't have the, the curly braces. So you're going to use this colon to open up a block of code, and then whatever is indented right, is going to be what happens if this evaluates to true. And then we stop indenting and then do another colon for the else part. Okay. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.